Well, hello everybody, it's Richard here. It's Sunday the 30th of May 2010 and the weather for a bank holiday has done what it always does and that it has rained most of the time. Uh, though it's brightened up a bit now and the sun shines out but it's quite windy out in the garden there and not the temperature we had last weekend which was over 30 degrees and then all of a sudden we had a sudden drop of 17 degrees as the week progresses, and uh, so now it sort of almost feels like a bit like an autumn feel and uh, but um, you know it's it's warmer than it has been so I'm not uh, complaining too much just to give you a quick weather update now today I thought I'd show you the Kenwood uh, uh, KX W6080 why do they have such numbers I can never remember anyway this is a double cassette machine that I bought on eBay for under a 10 tenner and it was something on that I had on the watch and put a put a, uh, a snipe on it and lo and behold I won it so um, and uh, it's been well looked after Mark in Derbyshire is the seller and uh, he sent it to me in this very well boxed up but it had a problem and uh, I was going to show you about how we're going to do that now I've already tried making this video once but I pushed the pause button so I had to start again so hopefully I can take Mr Panasonic off his perch and uh, swing the camera around let's have another go shall we here we go right here we go that's better I'm just going to turn you around right okay so here we are uh, this is the Kenwood, let me just show you, the Kenwood uh, KXW6080. Now, it comes with this rather nice instruction booklet, which is in, so, you know, almost uh, an epistle, basically, um, which Mark sent along with uh, the other bits and pieces. I have to say, I have read some of it, it's uh, quite detailed. I think as cassettes uh, player started to get towards the end of the life of cassette run as it were for because CDs were coming and this machine dates from 1996 I know that because on the back of the motor there's a date stamp and also some of the components have got 96 written on so it's quite a late one this um, and as you can see it's in this rather nice fetching black uh, it's made in China so though Kenwood as everyone knows is a Japanese company originally called Trio um, this is actually the uh, obviously under license in China to be made uh, but uh, you know so um, okay may not be the best build but it's quite good it has, it does, I had it going it does actually play quite well so now the components inside here we go twin cassettes these have got twin motors here as you can see and then you've got the most of the components here uh, and the mains transformer so a big box and uh, not a great deal in it as it were but the problem I had was cassette deck A now cassette deck A was okay because when you put this on which I'll show in a second um, the first thing is the cassette sensors tell the cassette components that there's a cassette in the slot as it were so if I just show you that, there we go, there we go, right, so there's a cassette in the slot. Now, inside there are two sensors, now, you can't really see in there, but there, if I just hold the camera gently here, I'll show you with my red pointer. These things here are sensors that when the cassette fits up inside, in other words, the top of the box there fits up inside, they push up and then that makes the cassette player realize that there's something in the slot and that you can push the play button which is uh, a solenoid type play plays on these so it's and uh, it does work very well um, the problem was that when you actually put this in it didn't recognize there was a cassette player there, a cassette deck set there and consequently you, I couldn't understand why it wasn't playing on this particular deck B was fine. B actually is the one that also does the recording. So I've got round this. Now if I just plug this in, go and switch her on. The first thing you do, it resets itself beautifully. I don't know where you can see. There's some the VUs there. Now if I press play, it does actually it doesn't have a play button. It has a forward button and reverse button. So you've got to stop. This is the controls to make the thing work. So you press this one forward, there we go, and then the counter will start, and you can see 
the VU's going there. I've got uh, this is the carpenters. Of course, it's not connected to an amplifier, so of course you can't hear anything. But it's actually going round. You can see there. Now, what was happening, of course, was as it was going in there, it wasn't actually telling the cassette player there was a cassette in the slot. So if I stop that now and do a rewind, it will re it will actually play in the reverse side of that tape. So stop that. There we go. That's forward. If I do reverse, it's working perfectly now. There we go. There we go. It's running, running forward there. So uh, it and so that that bit is now working. So what I did, I've actually put a piece of insulation tape just underneath where the pressure pads are to, to bulk it out a bit really and now when the cassette goes in, I don't know if you can see that, there we go, they go up and down slightly, you might just be able to see that there we go, you might just be able to see them move up and down and basically there's like two pins here that when they connect they then connect the circuitry at the back here, yeah, these two contacts then connect to these two pins, and that tells the machine that there is a cassette in the in the cassette slot. So there we go, uh, and you can reset here. Oh, you also got some other features. We've got Dolby reduction, noise reduction. You've got uh, mode there. I don't. Know, I'm not sure. You've got a filter on this. I'm not sure what those two are, but there's a M MPX filter. Uh, auto biased and then obviously the reset for the B cassette over that side and then underneath you've got a place for headphones and the time record and there's a mode so you can decide on whether you want your mode on minus 14 0 and on the other side as well so you can move the mode across there uh, and then this side of course you've got the high speed dubbing as well which I haven't got really got into very much but I just thought I'd show you that these machines are quite sensitive and it was a f through a process of uh, elimination if anything else that I managed to get this B cassette working. Anyway, just thought I'd update on that one and uh, see you all soon and thanks for watching.